Okay, so here's the grip. Um, I'm kind of reluctant to pull the rubber off it because this is fairly new and the rubber is still in pretty good shape. I mean, eventually it's going to have to be replaced, but, uh, you know, it's a wooden stick. It's shaped. It's got a hole in it. I think we can probably do something with this. All right, so how are we going to do that? Um, I have a piece of quarter-inch walnut here that I offered off, ordered off of eBay. I think this was like... I don't know, I got a stack of this stuff, but I think a single piece would be a few dollars. Um, this is a much bigger piece of wood here. This is from Lowe's. This is poplar, which is also a hardwood. So just using like my thumbnail test here, this is harder than the wood that um, that uh, that Prier is using. And I suspect it's at least as strong. This is actually a pretty nice piece of wood. You can see the grain in this. This is pretty close grained. Uh, it's quarter sawn, so I think that we'll have a good bit of strength from this. So I'm going to try to use these things to... Uh, so this, the prior grip, is a single piece of wood, right? Which, uh, from a structural standpoint, is actually not really an advantage. You, you would prefer to, to laminate a piece of wood if it's going to be under stresses like this. And in fact, when I peeled this back here, uh, there's a crack down this. It's not affecting the longitudinal strength, but, you know, it's cracked. Uh, so, so I think we can do better than that. I think that we can uh, that we can cut some pieces out and we can uh, laminate this together, and uh, and we can try to make something uh, at least as good as the pre -air grip. A final uh, a final kind of restriction here. Uh, I'm going to try to do this with as few tools as possible, and I'm also going to do it without the use of epoxy. I actually have some epoxy here. I'm not going to use it. Uh, I'm going to get somebody else to do some epoxying for me. But I'm going to use. I'm going to use tight bond, uh, type on three. So type on three is is brutally strong wood glue, but it's also pretty non-toxic. It's pretty easy to use, um, and it's not as as uh, as dangerous to use as as epoxy is. Uh, and for me especially, it's it's much safer. So uh, so I'm going to do that. Okay. So let's see what we can do here. Okay. So what tools am I going to use for this? Um, to start with, I'm going to use a five dollar saw from Harbor Freight and a couple of clamps and a quarter inch drill bit. But I also, I also, once I get to shaping, I'm gonna need some shaping tools, right? So I also want uh, a belt sander belt and a piece of PVC that looks like this. I think my camera work is not very good here. And, uh, and a piece of yardstick. I think we had a broken yardstick. So, so this is the plan. What am I going to do with these things? Yes. Excellent. All right, good. So take the belt sander belt uh, and glue it onto either side of one of the sticks and make a rasp like this. Very useful. And then take your piece of pipe and put some glue on the belt sander belt section and then wrap it in tape and leave it for a day. And when you are done, what you have is, this is actually a great tool and it's hard to buy anything like this. It's a very large diameter rasp. Uh, super durable, works good. Okay. If you would like to make a list of tools that it's nice to have but not required, um, I would say this is pretty high on the list. This is like a little $10 plastic dial caliper. So it's in millimeters. So millimeters are on the bottom there. So that's 10 millimeters uh, right there, right? That's exactly one centimeter between the jaws there. So if I'm trying to get these things the same width on one end as the other, or if I'm just trying to make sure that they're all approximately the same size, if I go like this, this is a little under 24 millimeters. And if I go to the other end, it's, you know, it's about the same. So good. I mean, I'm, I'm being pretty consistent. This is super, super helpful if you're trying to duplicate a grip. So like, I have, I have a little grip here that one of my students is like super fond of. We have to do some repairs to it because when we built it, we made the end of it here sort of dangerously narrow. He wanted a really narrow grip to match the narrow metal pommel that he likes to use. And uh, so this is, this is his preferred shape. He likes to hold it like this. This is exactly what he wanted, right? So. <clears throat> it is a smaller grip than most people use, so we needed carbon to make sure it was strong enough. But even with carbon, you can see that it's kind of um, it's kind of mushroomed on the end there, right? So we're going to have to do some repairs on that. But if I wanted to duplicate this grip, the first thing I would do is go along it and measure at specified intervals using the dial caliper here, right? So 
go here and measure how big it is and go here and measure it's hard to do with one hand right but i would go all the way down and measure it and then flip it sideways and measure the various thicknesses and then you know if i wrote all that down i would end up with a kind of a a pattern like this this is for a different grip but this tells me exactly how big a pommel is on the grip exactly how big it is at this point, exactly how big it is here, exactly how big it is at the front, and then looking at it from the top. And just with this, I can, I can duplicate a grip uh, so that you can't really tell uh, which one was the original and which one isn't. This is like for 10 bucks. I mean, it's not a machinist tool, right? But for 10 bucks, this is, this is an amazingly useful thing to have lying around. Something efficient manner. Yes? Yes. All right, so very nice little Harbor Freight saw, let's see how it works. Okay. That's one. This really is not rocket surgery. All right, all of these, the, the, the templates anyway, are about 15 centimeters long, uh, you can see here. And then if you stick a kind of a standard pommel on the end of it, you get to about 20 centimeters, which is too long. So all of these are a little oversized, uh, which is good. We can, we can trim a little bit off the end. So these are the standard length I make these two is the models or the, the templates is 15 centimeters. And then like uh, a minimum bend here, if I put this on a flat surface like this, what I'm saying is that there is a two centimeter gap. I don't know if you can see that, but between In the, um, the the middle of the template and the table. So the middle, this one, this is what I call a middle bend. It's actually a pretty pretty serious bend. Is a six millimeter gap in here between the template and the table. The maximum is a whole centimeter. I don't normally recommend like this curved and epic grip to my to my students, but you know a lot of people are using super bent grips these days, so I thought I would I would put together one super bent grip and we'll see. Alright, so you use the template and you cut out three pieces like that, right? You mark three pieces. So like this is the max grip thing. So I put this, I put the template on top of a piece of wood and I marked this out and I cut it and I made three of them. So here's all three and then the middle one I used the top edge as a guide and, and uh, split it in the middle. So what we're going to do here is put this here and put this here very carefully and leave a quarter inch channel I know I'm mixing metric and standard here a quarter inch channel and put this on top here and then we're going to clamp it all together and let it uh, and let it dry and we will have a grip or a blank for a grip anyway that has let's see if I can pick this up here that has you know a quarter inch channel on one end and we'll try not to do this and collapse the quarter inch channel on the other end and on the inside there'll be this this very nice uh, channel pre-made uh, square channel that goes all the way up that the tangle fit in and it's a section of a circle right so if if this is a section of a circle it's very easy to to bend the tang of the epe to slide it in there if it's not a section of a circle if it takes like a sharp bend or something then the tang has to kind of flex to get through there and then it's very hard to put the epe together so uh, we can once this is glued up we can modify the shape of this somewhat right like uh, we can flatten the top and flatten the bottom and have the whole first part of the epe pretty flat and then have it take a sharper turn and come down. We can do whatever shaping we want with two constraints. This hole here has to be in the middle coming out and we can't get too close to the channel in the middle, right? But aside from that, we can we can do considerable shaping on this. All right, so I've got two of the middle, uh, middle bend, so to speak, one minimum bend and one straight grip that I'm gonna put together. Um, when you're cutting these, if you're using a hand tool, so when I cut the I cut the straight grip out, and I just use this thing. This is a little cheap five dollar Japanese uh, saw that I got from Harbor Freight, and honestly, it is delightful. It's very nice to cut with. It's very sharp. Cuts on the pull stroke. Uh, I tried to film some of that. I hope that that came out. Um, and then when I'm cutting the curve, that doesn't work. 
So it feels primitive to do it, but I use a hacksaw. I just use the tip of the hacksaw to cut these curved lines here. It's a little bit, so I cut this one, um, I think I cut this one with the hacksaw, and I know I cut this, this is a walnut, I cut this on the bandsaw. The bandsaw was a lot easier, but if we look at this here, let's see, the bandsaw took about three seconds. So if you look at the fit between the two pieces, those are exactly the same curve off the bandsaw. The one I cut by hand, all right, it's a little bit wobblier. That's going to have, honestly, no effect on the function of the grip. So if you want to make one of these, all you really need is a, um, is a little, you know, cheap hacksaw blade. Uh, mark it out and, and uh, cut it out, and I'm going to show you how to glue it here in a second, and then all you have to do is shape it. All right, so what I need to do now, what I need to do now is get these out of the way. What I need to do now is actually glue some of these out. So to glue these up, you need a clamp. If you're just doing one or two of these, one of these, um, one of these little clamps, I think will work. I think I've done this before. So here, here, yeah. And that's more than enough clamping pressure. That's perfect. Honestly, if I had like 10 of these lying around, I would have just used these because that's super fast. It's plenty of clamping pressure for this. These aren't moving at all and that'll work perfectly. So if you are, um, if you are following at home and saying, I'm going to build one of these, but I don't have any tools, there you go. Uh, you don't need to go buy, I'm, I'm about to use a bunch of C-clamps because I have a bunch of C-clamps, but you don't need a bunch of C-clamps to do this. All right, so you cut this in half. Um, so try to kind of book match these and get the two sides that fit together the best. There we go. So this is where I cut them, right? And these two halves fit together the best. So I'm going to put these like this and then I'm gonna put this on top. So for a straight one, you know, it's not, not super critical. For the bent ones, it's a little bit more important. So here we go. We put some glue, very exciting. Here, here, like this, like this. There we go. Good. This was like this, right? So I want this to go like that. To figure out the geometry of this for a second. And this to go like that. There we go. Then put some glue on the top of this. There aren't any very deep sections here, so it's it's fine to like sort of over glue it and have a bunch of runoff and you just have to wipe up the glue afterwards. But it's better than having a glue starved joint. Okay, so there we go. And you're probably looking at that thinking those things in the middle are not aligned. And you are correct. So what we need is a quarter inch drill bit. So a quarter inch drill bit will let us align these things so that they have more or less exactly the correct sized hole stuck in the end here. So here we go, here we go. I don't know if this is coming across in the video or not, but here we go. So what I want is for these two things to be squeezed together pretty much as, as close as I can around the drill bit. And I want the top to be aligned with the bottom, right? And when I get that on one end, I put the clamp on. Good, then go to the other end and do the same thing. So just kind of pry this apart here. Come on, you. There we go. There we go. So just kind of pry this apart, stick a drill bit in this here. So slide this to the top, slide this. So it is kind of important to try to get the top even with the bottom and to try to get the hole that you are producing in the center, right? And then clamp this like this. There we go pull this out. And if you look down it, we've got a perfectly straight quarter inch hole. It's very good. It also has a ton of glue in it, right? It's got a bunch of bleed out and that's not ideal. It makes little glue boogers in there and, uh, you know, it can get hung up on your tang or something and, and it's just not ideal. So you need a coat hanger wire, a length of coat hanger wire and a little wad of paper. And you take a little wad of paper and you kind of shove it in there, make a little bullet, so to speak, 
shove it in here. There we go. Push this all the way through. And it'll push out all the glue. So I got a nice big glop of glue there on the plastic. Do it a couple of times. Run it along all the edges and make sure that that you don't have any you know, serious glue boogers sitting in there. All right, good. Uh, if you want to now, you can also take a little bit of paper and, and wipe the excess glue from here. And that can feel like it doesn't matter, but it can actually speed up your drying by a considerable amount. If you have a lot of glue bleed out, uh, that can slow down the drying quite a lot. So, you know, but this looks okay. This looks okay to me, I think. So I'm going to let this dry, and, uh, and that is the process for that one. Okay, so we are back, and we have a bunch of dried uh, glue, glue up jobs here. So let's see if I can undo this with one hand. Probably not. There we go. Very exciting. Kind of exciting. It's fun. All right, so um, I have a, I have what I would call now a grip blank, right? So it has a hole down the middle. Um, it's it's oversized in every dimension, although the side to side dimension is not super oversized. So we have to be careful not to take off too much there. Uh, all right, so I'm going to unclamp the rest of these, and then we'll see what we've got. Okay, so this is what I've come up with. It is, I think, a little bit of a smoother bend then the prior and uh, and I'm going to shape the end of it uh, a little bit differently but both of them are without the cover both of them are about 15 millimeters high um, and then if I look at it this way yeah and I look at this this way let's see if I can do this one-handed so the current depth is just just below two centimeters and the current and the 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 width of this is like uh, three millimeters, a little more than three millimeters less than that. So I need to narrow it a little bit, but uh, and the, the, the width is kind of constant all the way up. So uh, I need to narrow it a little bit, but not, not a huge amount. All right, let's see if this will work. So the goal here is to use my newly constructed uh, homemade tools to shape this thing in kind of an effective way. So I'm just taking a device. If you don't have a vise, you can certainly do this uh, without one, but you know, it makes it a little easier. So, so good so we're getting there so it's it is worked down a little bit I've got the whole middle section flush now uh, maybe I'll do the top section next there. So I have done a bit of shaping on this, and it is roughly the correct dimensions. And now I have taken my tiny little uh, Japanese saw, and I've made a little groove around here. And I have used my X-Acto knife to sort of whittle this down to a sort of a circle. So I'm going to try to put my little, uh, my little section of galvanized pipe on there and see how that works. Well, pretty good if I do say so myself. So... There we go. We've got a little hoop strength there. It'll keep the end of the thing from splitting. And I don't really think that the front end that they put on the Prior thing, I don't think you need that, so I'm not going to bother with it. All right, so I have used my, my patented uh, uh, belt sander on the pipe trick. I can't really film while I'm doing this, so um, uh, I've used that to round the corners of this a bit. And honestly, I think I'm just about done with the shaping of this. Um, so here, let's compare. Let's compare the, the new grip to the Prior wooden grip. So they are 
certainly similar, but uh, but they're not the same thing. Uh, so this one has a more robust cap. In my experience, these things start to mash and and lose shape at the end, and that's usually how a your grip sort of breaks. You know, it starts to mash, and and uh, this wood at the end here starts to split, and you just decide that it's shot. Um, as I said, this one's split also, and, and if they crack enough, you know, they're not usable. Uh, the Prior has a pretty sharp corner, so they put the rubber, uh, the rubber tubing over it. Uh, I'm going to put a wrap of similar thickness, but I like a little bit more of a rounded corner, so I still want a flat spot on the top where I can put my hand, and I still want to be able to shift like this, so I've left a flat spot here, and I've left this here. I don't want it to be too round, but, uh, but I think this is... I think this is a uh, pretty good shape for me. And if you look at these, the Prior has its bend. It's not much of a bend, but it has its bend back here. I put the bend on this one a little bit further forward. It's about right here so that the back end is straighter. So when I hold it back here, if the pommel's in my hand, uh, I think this is a good shape for me. So anyway, you can obviously alter the, uh, alter the shape of these considerably, you know, when you're making them. All right, so what's next? All right, so I have whittled with my X-Acto knife and then sandpapered a little notch on the front here so that so that the wires don't get crushed. We need that. Uh, I cut my finger, so I got a little blood on the grip. That's pretty cool. It's got to be good luck, right? Uh, 